I have very real concern about uh, all sorts of issues, really. But just where are we going? I don't mean as a country or as a bunch of politicians, but basically the whole world. What's it doing with itself? The one thing we seem to have created is inequality, and we've done that because of the economic system that we have. We encourage people to work so we can give them money, provided they use that money to buy material goods. But the problem with material goods is that they immediately start to decay. They lose their value. You buy this shiny new car, and in a very short time, it's been superseded by a better model. It's starting to decay, and we now know that many companies have built-in obsolescence. I have a friend who won't buy an American car, although she's an American citizen, because she says, once it gets out of warranty, there's absolutely no guarantee the computer inside that car will not decide to pack up. So there's a perverse logic going on. Lots of people believing that the only way to succeed is to make money, and the only way you can make money is to be an individual that fights hard and beats the opposition. It's not a very sound principle for a civilization. And I begin to argue whether we've actually got a civilization in the widest sense of the word. My granddaughter is very clever. Actually, all my granddaughters are very clever. But the one that's finally got to an age where she can be measured has proved that she is very clever. She got 13 GCSEs, all at, all at A or A star, and she's just taken her, I think it must be AS levels. I don't know what the heck it's all about, but she's done very well there as well. But where's it taking her? What's it doing for her? I think in many ways... She's lost her childhood. She's certainly lost that innocence of childhood. And that innocence leads to creativity. I think if we look back historically at the great advances in our civilizations, let's take the Industrial Revolution period, there, in, there is some substance in the idea that if we let people have enough, give them freedom, don't impose anything upon them, then we get new developments, new results, unforeseen progress from these people. And I just ask you to think of the significant figures of the 19th century, the ones who made progress, many of them came from fairly rich families, but they were not the first, second or third sons the first taking over the land and estates, the second going into the army, the third into the church, the fourth. Well, that doesn't really matter, does it? We've solved it all from there on. They can just do whatever they like. And they did. And they gave us all sorts of new developments. Isn't that a clue to the way in which we should be behaving? There's an unpalatable truth that was there when I was in university some 40-odd years ago, which suggests that we have too many people in this world and that some form of birth control and the nurturing of our children is of vital importance. It's an unpleasant fact that without education, a lot of the people that are now being born will become totally superfluous to the nature of our society. That sounds a harsh thing to say, but unfortunately it's true. And I foresee a second period in history where beggars are on the street, where we have the them and us that you find in places such as India today. And we need to avoid that. And we can avoid it. But we need a world plan, in a sense. We're moving up towards 7 billion. There's talk of there being 9 billion people in this world. If that's to be allowed, where is the food coming from? How are they going to be kept occupied? And do we actually need them?
that leads on to the more difficult question of how do we stop them from breeding? It's true that the more affluent a country becomes, the less likely the people are to exceed the number of births in their population. Italy is the greatest example of that, a Roman Catholic country where birth control is not allowed, and yet it has a very low birth rate. Explain that, but welcome it. We have a dichotomy in many cases in that the big corporations want people. They want cheap labor in order to produce whatever it is they produce, and they want plenty of customers. That's one reason why we've allowed all sorts of immigration into this country. The larger corporations fearing that the population is actually going to fall, and what a desperate state that will be. They won't make as much profit. I'm not sure that that should be a consideration. But unfortunately, nation states no longer have significant powers. It's left to the large corporations to decide. I think this will just have to be an opening statement. It's a long and complex set of questions that we need to ask ourselves, but I do believe they need to be asked. Enjoy your day. <laughs>